Welcome to MAKE, a course taught at the University of South Florida. I'm Rudi Schlaf, a professor in the Electrical Engineering Department. This tutorial is about the bootloader and how to use the AVR ISR MK2 programmer to program the Arduino. We will discuss what does the bootloader do, we will learn why it causes a delay on power up, and how we can use this programmer to get rid of this delay and program the Arduino without using the bootloader. So why do we have a bootloader on the Arduino? The reason for the bootloader is that when you upload a sketch from the computer through the USB connector into the Arduino, then the computer talks with a processor that has code on it to handle the USB communications and this processor then translates this into a serial communication protocol via uh, pins 0 and 1 these are TX and, and RX of the Arduino and so when code is uploaded there needs to be some software on there to handle this communication and this is what the bootloader does you probably know that if you fry the Atmega 328P chip that's on the Arduino board, then you cannot just buy any blank chip and put it in there. You have to buy one that has the bootloader already installed, or you need to get a programmer and install the bootloader from the computer onto this chip before you can use it in the normal manner to upload sketches. We will actually see later on how this is done with the uploading of the bootloader. Now this bootloader is a program that is 512 bytes long, so it, it costs you a little bit of the 32 kilobyte programming space that is on the Atmega chip. When you turn the Arduino on, then the first thing after the reset is that the bootloader starts running, right? Because the program counter is at zero and so it jumps into the bootloader and the bootloader starts uh, looking for communication with the USB interface. And the way this is programmed is that the bootloader spends about half a second or one second to wait and to see if there is anything coming from the USB interface after the reset. And if nothing is coming, then it times out and then it jumps into the program space after the 512 bytes and executes your Arduino sketch. The problem with this is that if you build something where you want after you turn it on that it immediately springs into action, you don't want to wait half a second or one second until it springs into action. With the bootloader on the Atmega chip, there is no way around this because every time it comes on, then the bootloader waits for this time and then the program starts. And so what we need to do is we need to learn how to program the Arduino, how to upload your sketch without the bootloader on this chip so that we could put any old Atmega 328P chip on the Arduino board and then directly program it with your sketch without having that bootloader on there. If we want to upload a sketch without using the bootloader and the USB interface, we still need something that communicates with the chip and that connects to the computer. That's pretty obvious. And so what Atmel is selling is called the AVR ISP MK2. This costs about $35 if you buy it originally from Atmel or you can also try to get a clone from eBay that has the same functionality. So what does this stand for? ISP stands for in-system programmer and the Arduino board has these pin headers on there. You may have wondered what they are for. They are unmarked. It just says ICSP here in, in very small print to it and this is the port where this AVR ISP MK2 device connects to. It has a cable that comes out on the other end. Up front here we have a USB connector so this is where it goes to the computer and this is the plug that connects to this pin header on the Arduino. Here you see a magnification of this plug. Of course everything is unlabeled so I had to do some research after buying this thing online in order to figure out how to hook it up. We have the 5 volts, we have ground, we have the a reset line and then we have the three SPI bus lines master out, slave in, master in, slave out and this is the clock line. 
The great thing with this device is that when you use the Arduino IDE on the Macintosh, you can simply connect this thing and without any further ado program your sketch onto the Arduino. It's all preset on the Mac. The Arduino IDE is ready to use with this device. So you just plug it in, you connect it and you press the secret shift key before you press upload and then it will upload it. On the PC of course we need to download a driver and nobody tells you where but uh, I found out that the driver can be obtained from this URL. I tried it out on my PC and it seems to work. It's interesting to know when you use this device your sketch will overwrite the bootloader that is on this chip. This is simply because whenever you use this the first thing it does is to erase all the memory on the Atmega chip to which it is connected through the uh, SPI bus pins. And then after the memory is completely erased your sketch is uploaded. After that this Arduino board cannot be used with the USB connector anymore. If you want to use it with the USB connector again after experimenting with the in-system programmer then you have to use the Arduino IDE and first load the bootloader again on this chip before you can upload a sketch. I'm sure you already wondered if we connect the programmer to the SPI pins what happens if we have things connected to the SPI pins like devices that communicate with the SPI protocol with the Arduino we frequently do that and we also want to use the programmer at the same time. This means that if you design a circuit that enables in-system programming you need to think about what you hook up to the SPI pins. If it's just an SPI device, some integrated circuit that communicates with the Arduino via SPI, then it's pretty simple because these inputs draw very little current or deliver very little current and so we can separate them from the programmer by inserting resistors into the lines. 4.7 kilo ohm apparently works well and then the programmer does not see interference from the SPI devices. Of course there are many other things you could do with these pins and there is an interesting website. You can go to this URL where many possibilities are being discussed how to deal with various situations for a number of applications. Okay, time to play with the Arduino. So first I want to show you this bootloader delay and I prepared this Arduino board by uploading the Blink example from the Arduino IDE. With the Blink example the built-in LED blinks in a 1 hertz mode, so once a second it goes on and off. When I will connect the board now is to the USB port and it will power up, then you will see some irregular blinking and then after maybe half to one seconds the regular on-off blink of the blink example will start. So let's have a look. There, now it's on. So let's do this again. Irregular blinks and now it's on. So maybe a second it took until the blink actually started. We just saw that the bootloader causes a startup delay. So the LED only started blinking after one second after power up. Now I want to use the in-system programmer to upload the blink sketch. So in order to do that we connect the ISP now to the computer with the USB port and we connect the Arduino board to the in-system programmer with the ICSP port of the Arduino board. The Arduino board is not connected with the USB anymore in this case. Now in order to use the in-system programmer with the system that is hooked up to it we need to power the system with an external power supply or with the built-in power supply. So in this case I hooked up the Arduino board to my lab power supply and I set it to 5 volts and I just feed it in here to the ground pin and the 5 volts pin of the Arduino. You gotta be careful with this if you set it to a higher than about 5.7 volt or so you may damage the microcontroller on the Arduino board. Now what we will see is 
as soon as I turn on the power to the Arduino board, the LED here will go green and this means that this thing is ready for uploading and then on the in the Arduino IDE I will simply press the shift button and hit upload and you will see then I, I do this a few times actually you will see it then the message is not simply uploading but it says uploading via programmer then you will see here a green LED flash a few times and then the code will be uploaded and it's actually much faster than if you use the USB connection so this is another advantage of the in-system programmer Okay, power supply on, LED goes green, and now I hit the shift button and click upload, and so you see here using programmer every time I click the shift button, so we upload now, and then we see a little bit of green blinking here, and now we have the blinking LED again on the Arduino, so the sketch has been uploaded again, but this time without bootloader. Okay, let's see if this cured the bootloader delay on power up of the Arduino. So we hope now that once we power up the Arduino the LED will start blinking right away and not go through this rapid blinking that we observed in the case after uploading the sketch with the USB port. So here you see the Arduino board again hooked up to my external power supply so it's not connected to the computer. Here the negative pole of the power supply goes to the ground connector and the positive pole set to 5 volts goes to the 5 volts connector on the board. So again that's a little bit dangerous, there is no voltage regulator involved now, this voltage goes directly to the chip so make sure that this is really exactly 5 volts. Okay so what we will see now is I will connect here and then the LED will come on immediately and then I'll repeat it a couple times. Okay, here we go. Connection and immediately we jump into the blink sketch, right? There was no initial fast blinking like we observed before. Bang, and it's on. Okay, so by using the in-system programmer we can create a system that actually starts up right away with the code that's on the chip. Okay, so we saw that the in-system programmer solves the bootloader problem. Now let's see how we can recover and use this Arduino again with the USB port because the bootloader is gone now and we will see this now. I, I just hooked it up to the USB port and we'll try to upload the blink sketch without the bootloader on here and we will see that this is not working and we'll get a error message. Okay, let's try to upload it. Here I'm clicking on upload and it's compiling now and it's trying to upload and it takes a fairly long time and here we have the error message so go to arduino.cc and get help so it's obvious if we want to get back to using the USB port to upload sketches to the Arduino we need to burn that bootloader back onto the chip. Luckily this is all built into the Arduino IDE. All we have to do is hook up the in-system programmer again and power the Arduino with the external power supply and all we need to do now is to select burn bootloader in the IDE and the bootloader will be uploaded again onto the chip and after that we will see that we can upload the blink sketch. So here we go. All you have to do now is select burn bootloader and now the LED in the uh, in-system programmer starts blinking and then the main LED goes red and when it turns green again the bootloader is uploaded. You also see it in the IDE. Here we go the bootloader is on there. Okay now the bootloader should be on there again so let's try it again with the USB connector. So I hooked it up with the USB cable standard Arduino style. Now let's see if we can upload Blink. Okay let's give this a try. Here upload, compiling, uploading and now the LED is blinking again. So we have our bootloaded Arduino back it seems and we can again use the USB connector. This concludes our video about the Arduino bootloader and the AVR ISR MK2 programmer. Thanks for watching.